Actually, I want to start off by giving all praises on our glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles, you know, there's a great millstone. Peace and salutations to the whole fleet elect. Coming at you with another quick lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this lesson may be edifying. This is a quick in the news update. As the scriptures say in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And as many of the Lord's service to, service to prophets, we are standing upon our watch. So we see the different things, you know, regular media sites. Usually we get a lot of information from the alternative media sites. Okay, that's where a lot of information is uh, being broadcasted. Different things that's happening and going on around the world. Because, you know, regular media, they ain't telling you what the hell is going on. They're not preparing masses of the people for what's about to take place or just, you know, regular in the news things of that's happening, which people should know about. OK, so this is where you have a lot of, like I said before, a lot of alternative media being broadcasted where people are updated, which they with, updated with things that actually uh, make sense and things that people should actually know about. OK. Yes, it's not just coming from the service of the prophets, which that's who is mainly coming from. But the Lord put it on spirit, the spirit of uh, heathens, okay, chiefly the Edomites and other nations, to uh, you know go into different things and bring out different information and articles and even uh, clips or, or videos of you know different things that's taking place around the world that is going to ultimately change the life around us as we see. Okay, so without further ado. Let's go into a quick, uh, a few articles, and I got a few uh, clips that I want to play through the spirit. Low willingness edifying. So I'm going to go to the ones that I got sent to the chat, all right, um, to, to my, uh, to, the, to the camp. They're changing fast in this digital world, so much so that a growing number of businesses will not even accept cash anymore. Yeah, they are starting to set up reverse ATMs. It quickly turns cash into a prepaid debit card to be used on the fly. And Dre Clark explains from New York City. Dre, I've never heard of this. Mitch has never heard of this. What's it about? Uh, yeah, you know, I never heard of it either until I read about it last night. Uh, it's relatively new, but it's uh, slowly but surely catching on. You know, cash is really still king. But reverse ATMs are definitely the way of the future as more businesses look for ways to go cashless here at Madison Square Garden in Midtown Manhattan. They already have machines inside the arena that can actually convert your cash into a debit card here. Now here you can see exactly how it works. You load money into a kiosk like you see here and within seconds you can get a receipt confirming your conversion and a prepaid active card. Many of the prepaid cards are either MasterCard or Visa, and you can use them anywhere where those cards are accepted. Some kiosks may actually charge you a $5 fee uh, for the card. Meanwhile, amusement parks, fast food restaurants, and many professional sports venues are already using the cash to card kiosks, and you'll start seeing more of them uh, in airports and on college campuses. Business owners say they like the kiosk because it helps prevent theft and robberies and it stops the spread of germs that can really be found on a lot of money that's downright dirty. Now, many people started going cashless during the pandemic uh, because they did not want to touch money and coins, fearing uh, they could contract the virus. Meanwhile, cities across the country, like San Francisco, D.C., Philly, and New York, they actually have bans on cashless uh, businesses. So business owners, by law, cannot refuse to accept any cash from a customer. Also get this, the FDIC says up to 5% of US households or 6 million Americans are considered unbanked. That means they don't have either a checking or savings account. They prefer to deal in strictly cash. So yeah, guys, it's relatively new, uh, but here in New York City and other places around the country, this is the way of the future. Send it back to you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television pro yeah so pretty much you see what's happening okay everything is being geared to our ca geared towards a cashless society now these different businesses they got bans or uh they put a um uh different businesses that is trying to opt out of you know opt out of not using cash okay well that they're they're going to be wiped out if they uh if they don't get down with the system OK, because this is this is going to be the system of you're going to have to, um, 
you're going to have to uh, comply, okay, with the, you know, cashless rule. You know, everything is being pushed and geared towards that. That's how the system is going to be set up. So you're either going to get with the program or you're going to be left out, which, you know, majority of these places are going to be left out anyway because they only, they're only going to want a handful of uh, companies, you know, operating um, this, this system ultimately. Now, they will use these small companies in the meantime to uh, continue to uh, uh, continue to forward this agenda. But ultimately, a lot of these places will be wiped out. You know, a lot of these small time banks, a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, like we call them mama pop shop, little little stores. No, it's going to be uh, only big box warehouse facilities that's going to be amongst these operations of this uh, of this. Uh, we know this the whole buying and selling ordeal. OK, but we're just seeing the transition of the dollar being wiped out which the dollar is already through it's already backed by nothing okay but like i said we're going into i'm not walking past it we're going into where businesses are are, are about to be in the compliance stage of you know uh the way of using less cash all right and, and people oh let me say this and the people that is uh currently not using banks in cash well guess what they're going to have to comply as well because you're going to have to be a part of the system there is no way if ands and buts about it matter of fact let me get a scripture because everything at the end of the day this is all leading up to what prophecy right prophecy what what book talks about that the holy scriptures that's why i said see he out of the book of the lord and read let's get that real fast let's go to the book Revelation to the 13. <clears throat> Verse 16, it says, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor. Who is he? Right? We know this is talking about Esau Edom, the elites. Okay. This man is setting up a system where he's going to cause of all who? Both small and great, rich and poor. So no matter what position you are, what rank, what class you consider yourself as, right? He's going to cause you to what um small a uh, small great rich and poor free or bond to receive a what a karagma in their right hand or in their foreheads let's get and that no man might do what buy or sell save he that had the the karagma or the name of the beast or the number of his name so you see the system that is being um the system that is being put in place where you're not going to be able to what where, where you're not going to be able to what buy or sell okay you're not going to be able to do anything and people are going to be made to comply to this this is not a um you know uh, this is not going to be by choice now right now you know it's by choice you know we know the devil's going to come out with uh have have a whole bunch of signs of uh signs of lying wonders and deceive people to make it look like it's cool and it's going to be you know the next best thing you know how it's going to be presented to you because it's going to be it's going to be uh, uh, accessible, you know. It's going to be easy to do things, you know. Um, they're going to put it in people's mind where it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be like a safety net into them where it's going to prevent theft, you know, and all type of other things. Where it's just people are going to be like, you know, this is the way. It's just easier to do it this way, and people are going to get down with it, you know. But not knowing that this karagma, right? If you take this karagma, this is going to be a judgment. And this is where the men of the, men of the Lord, the servants, the prophets come at. Okay, to explain to you that do not, all right, as, we, as I repeat, do not take the karagma. I don't care how it sounds to you, okay? I don't care if you think, if it's going to make your life easier, so to speak, as you think. It's a temper, it's a temp, it's going to be something that's temporal, okay? And something that's going to get you a harsh judgment. Do not take it. Let's continue.
Things like this has been ongoing in other countries, Greece, France. The scriptures talk about, you know, the sedition among men. The scriptures talk about, you know, basically a rebellion against the higher authorities. You know, the people that stand in power. You know, the princes, the kings. You see? The sedition among men. Yeah. So this is coming to America, Babylon the Great as well. Once, look, once the U.S. citizens <laughs> actually found out, you know, because a, a lot of, you know, there is a, a amount of U.S. people to know what the hell is going on. A, a, a very small amount, you know, because a lot, most, majority of these people are sheeple to entertain by the Bread and Circus Act. And the Bread and Circus Act usually goes into, you know, uh, you know, the sports entertainment industry, right? But Esau has leveled it up. Uh, to the point where the breaded circus is your damn cell phone. You know, if you look around, go go look around. If, if, even if you're on a bus, you know, traveling, you know, whatever transit system you use, look around. Guess what everybody is tuned into? Their cell phone. Right? People are walking down the street what, with their head in the phone, getting hit by a bus and getting hit by cars. Why? Because they're not paying attention. Their head is in their cell phone. People driving. Right? What are they always doing? You see them looking down. A lot of car crashes crashes happen because what? People are in their cell phone. They're either, you know, talking, texting, looking at something. You know? Everyone is on their cell phone. So the you know, Esau used this device, which this device can be used for many different purposes, but a lot of these people a lot of people use this device that we uh that we have here, which is the cell phone, which is a necessity now in today's society, you know, but um, people use this uh, cell phone for fucking folly, man. You know, people use it for folly. You so so you know you can also just put this in there as the, the cell phone is a part of the entertainment distraction of the bread and circus act. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, you got people over there on alert and paying attention uh, that what their corrupt government is doing to them, and they are you know a fighting back. You know. A little bit more <clears throat> it says uh this is from vox it says you may never eat inside a fast food restaurant again as diners increasingly turn to delivery the future of fast food may be one with no human interaction at all you see do you understand what's happening okay is we used to think of things being futuristic of you know um you know, when you see things are futuristic, like, uh, you know, uh, robots delivering your food and uh, robots, uh, 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 you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, making your burgers and making your drinks. I also did an article well, back on that. You have a, uh, a robot machine called Flippy and another robot machine called Sippy. You know, the Flippy uh, flips the burgers and do, th does all the things like that. And Sippy is the drink maker. You know, so really, they really don't need. Uh, restaurants are eventually going to need no human interaction in them, you know, as as much as they do. They might need maybe eh, 10 percent or 15 percent of, of workers there just to maybe operate the machines in case they fail and do different things to the machine. But other than that, they're not going to need a full crew to operate these different businesses in place because their uh, uh, rope uh, machine uh, uh, machines are being created to do what to actually do the do the job and take up do the job and take over uh, uh what the what the uh human uh could do all right but the thing about that that uh the robot is the robot don't get tired the robot don't get sick the robot is reliable <laughs> you see you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to pay the robot for vacation days sick days personal days you know the robot doesn't, uh, 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 you know, uh, complain. It does what you tell it to do. And it's going to be continuous. You see? And restaurant owners or fast food businesses are saying, you know what? This, this, this is the way. This is how we can save, uh, this is how we can save money. What they call it? Uh, uh, this is a cost, a less cost effective, you know? If we just uh, get this $10,000 robot. You know, we'll save money in the long run. Okay, but nevertheless, let's continue. It says, there was a time when your local McDonald's was the ideal spot for a six-year-old birthday party. Its play place had ball pits and slices where children could spend hours post-Happy Meal. 
And this is not uh, to uh, promote McDonald's. Don't be eating this shit. This shit is garbage, man. For real. Most often, mostly fast foods is, and not if all, all garbage, but you know, you know, uh, you know, brothers still eat at certain places, um, you know, here and there. Don't be consuming this type of garbage every day, whether it's Burger King, Wendy's, Popeyes, you know what I'm saying? Jack in the box, wherever you may go, but you do eat it. Hey, it is what it is. Cause that shit do be good. I ain't gonna hold you. Some of these, some of these spots, you know, be good. Like I, I'm a more of a Burger King, Wendy's, Popeyes type of guy, you know, it's not an everyday thing. It might be maybe once a month, you know, but don't be eat, don't consume this crate, this crap on a, on a, uh, two, three times a week basis, man. This is garbage, you know? So it says McDonald's launched play places in the 1970s in an effort to build brand loyalty in children by emphasizing a family friendly, friendly environment. I remember these days, right? Not the 1970s, but when it used to be like this kid friendly, you know, the ball pits, the play place and all that good stuff. Right. It says today you may you, you'd be hard pressed to find one. Yeah, that's out. You're not going to find one anymore. That's just due to safety and health concerns. Ball pits are known to be bacterial cesspits. People just aren't hanging out at fast food joints the way they used to. By the end of 2021, dining and visits to fast food chains have fallen to just 14% of the restaurant traffic compared to 28% pre pre-pandemic, according to the market research firm MPD Group. When it comes to burgers and fries, people are increasingly scarfing them down in their homes, at their offices, in their cars, anywhere really but in the restaurant. Now, McDonald's and other fast food and fast casual giants are betting on the digital kitchen. Look at that. What, 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 digital kitchen. Sleek, compact stores that harness autom automation and di digitalization to have diners ordering through mobile apps and what? Digital kiosks to get diners in and out in rec record time. Meanwhile, chains are demolishing their dining rooms or shrinking them in order to meet the demand of drive through and digital ordering. Stephen Baker, an architect at Harrison French, an associate who works on fast food restaurants, design and development, wrote in an article last year for McDonald's, Sweetgreen, and others, reducing seating means chains can open smaller stores, right? And things going to be less cost effective. Saving on expensive real estate, real estate, especially in urban areas. The big transformation taking place inside restaurants also threatens to change how the industry looks at labor. In April, McDonald's announced hundreds of what? Now, but you see what we're going to, going to with this? The AI technology and these different robots is going to what? Take your jobs. See, so while you see these signs and lying wonders and these things of, yeah, this is fast paced and this is good. And, you know, this is this is the best thing for us. You don't know us. This is your job. Your job is gone behind what the AI tech system. Right. And robots. Believe it or not, it says. Hundreds of layoffs. <clears throat> In its corporate offices is a part of a larger strategy to open new locations while investing more into digital delivery and drive through and all for fast food and fast casual restaurants, whether it's third party delivery apps, automated kiosks or even food delivery by drone. This is a new way they push into the drone delivery, uh, drone delivery. Amazon just heavily uh, uh, pursued in this. OK. The glittering promise of tech is is the ability to be to offload to machines more and more of the tasks performed by people paid an hourly wage. Didn't I just say that? I told you last year, 85 percent of fast food restaurant orders were to go. According to the data from MPD, drive throughs are busier than ever, with roughly three quarters of orders being placed at the drive through food service consulting firm tech. Technomic found that 73% of all orders at limited service restaurants, places where you pay in advance and don't typically have table service, including both fast food and casual restaurants, were either carry out or delivery in the first half of 2022. So this is the this is the move. Okay, this is the move. But just going in through the spirit, you know, as you can see, you know, every, 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 as everything is being put, you know, uh, are being made uh, a digital way. Guess what? Guess who loses behind this? People in their regular everyday jobs. Okay. Another article. Is your company planning layoffs, closures? Many states let you check. Okay. Between tons of tech layoffs and major retailers closing up shop, it's understandable if you're feeling a little uneasy in terms of job security. 
depending on the size of your company and your state of residence you may be easily you may be able to easily check if your comp employer is planning serious cuts or, or branch closures it's thanks to the federal law called the warren act which stands for worker adjustment Re retraining notification act essentially the law requires employee employers with 100 or more full-time employees to give 60 days of advance notice for plant closings or mass layoffs a mass layoff is defined as one loss of 500 or more jobs at employment site or two loss of 50 to 499 jobs if that number makes up more than 33 percent of the company's workforce some states have even stricter rules requiring war notices from smaller companies or employers planning layoffs that affect fewer people um and that's just uh i'm not gonna re uh, read into all that you know but uh let's uh, i want to get more of the point go down here to the point that you can see it says the latest job jobless claims numbers published thursday show 13,000 more people apply for unemployment benefits in the last week of april when compared to the week before Overall, about 1.8 million were collecting unemployment in the week ending in April uh, on April 22nd. Bro, this is this is 2023 that we're reading of 1.8 million collecting unemployment, you know, at the, uh, basically almost at the end of April. Right now, we are in the beginning, the beginning of May. OK, but this thing, unemployment and job layoffs and all these things are going to continue to increase layoffs are going to continue to increase you see oh yeah so man i was talking about mcdonald's right somebody did a heat map of mcdonald's the mcdonald's in america look at this <laughs> this is crazy you see but they talk about uh america talking about people's health they care about people's health they don't give a damn about people's health man because they, if they did, they wouldn't have all this garbage everywhere. And this is just McDonald's, man. <laughs> this is just McDonald's. You add all the fast food restaurants and the, the, the garbage disposal places that uh, uh, what they feed us with, this whole thing would be lit up like a freaking checkerboard or a uh, yeah a checkerboard. All right. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. There's some more I want to get. There's actually more I want to get. Um, oh, and this is a, a video. I'm not going to play this, but I'll just read it. It says AI to replace human jobs. AI can replace 80% human jobs as experts. Okay, in the English latest news. And uh, let's get this last one, you know, because I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, you know, on the way to get this daily bread. But, you know, I, cu I couldn't... Uh, couldn't start my day out without you know reading some scriptures and going into and bringing this word out you know um, for BBC um, news it says no fault evictions there's nothing you can do a couple who spent two years fighting a non-fault eviction notice on their home of more than 20 years said they were po poised for panic as they waited at ballots to finally move them out Barbara Smothers and her partner Les were first issued the Section 21 eviction order in 2021, which means a landlord does not need to give a reason for ending the tenancy. Since they, since then, they had spent more than a thousand—I think this is euros—in court fees defending their case. But in April, were handed their final eviction notice. They are not alone. The number of Section 21 eviction notice handed to tenants in the Mid Midlands is the highest it's been in the in the in the past five years according to the latest government data and this is everywhere everywhere is increasing in um you know like i say uh loaned folks okay uh repossessions you know uh four house uh, housing foreclosures evictions all that everything is increased tremendously it says in 2022 more than 1720 no fault claims were issued by private landlords to tenants which saw a 172% increase on their previous year, up from 635. Yeah, because you gotta think, landlords, are, they are gaining money by having different tenants in their homes, but if they don't own the home that they're in, and they feel like they can save money, they like, shit, we putting you out. And we going back to our home, and then leaving this home where we gotta pay uh, this mortgage at, so we can save costs, you know? It says, uh. Barbara, 69, who lives in Ollie, 
Staffordshire spoke to BBC News after receiving their first eviction notice and said their lives had overwhelmingly been consumed by the fear of where they would live. And a lot of people got that mindset because they don't know whether they're going to go to or fro. Oh. Oh, oh, what's going on? You know, every every, every move. It says, she said, you can go to bed worrying about it. You can go to sleep and wake up thinking about it. I've got to find somewhere else to go. What I'm going to. Barbara has 12 therapy horses, which therapy horses which need to relocate with her, making the search for a home even harder. I didn't know anything about this Section 21 evictions until a couple years ago. I felt like people look at you and judge you. Anyone in private rental is at risk. And of this, there is nothing you can do. Yup. And this is the point. You know, everyone is at risk. And everyone is, you know, a snap of a finger away from being evicted, being their car repossessed, you know, and so much more. Being, being about to be out of money, you know, if the bank runs start to happen, a lot of things. But I don't want y'all to be, uh, you know, hear this background of madness in the back. Like I said, this is just a quick update to the news. Lil Willis, Edifance, the next time I want to say, Shalom.